It's been a long time since the uh, Little Red Schoolhouse was an institution of learning, but here it is, a symbol of the way things used to be. It was basic instruction with no frills. It was cheap, and for those times, it was fairly effective. Well, we've come a long way since then, and times are changing. But in one way, we're moving toward the kind of instruction that might have been done in the Little Red Schoolhouse. Individualized instruction. Because of the small numbers of students and their varying ages, instruction in many cases had to be individualized, especially if the school had only one or two students per class. Later, schools became consolidated and students were grouped according to age and taught the same things at the same time, regardless of their aptitudes and learning needs and desires. Today, advances in instructional technology have enabled us to individually teach large numbers of students on a cost-effective basis, tailoring both method and context to individual differences. The instructional systems development concept is learner-oriented, requiring instruction to be centered around what the student needs to know and be able to do. Individualized instruction as we know it today is promoted by the ISD process and takes advantage of the fact that different students learn not only at different rates, but in different ways. During the next few minutes, we will further define individualized instruction and examine some planning considerations. In doing so, we will show how individualized instruction can be applied to typical Air Force instructional programs. And hey, further... Wait a minute. Oh. Wait a minute. All right. I've been developing these uh, programs for years. But I know there's a great deal written about uh, what individualized instruction is. But it seems to me that more of it is what it isn't and not what it is. How about telling me? Fair enough. Individualized instruction means many things to many people, but perhaps a definition by Dr. Robert F. Mager, a noted authority on instructional design, explains what we mean. He says that, an instructional system is individualized when the characteristics of each student play a major part in the selection of objectives, materials, procedures, and time. One does not simply say that a system is or is not individualized, however, for it's not a black or white matter. Rather, one tries to identify the nature and degree of individualization. Of course, the nature and degree of individualization will vary from course to course, depending upon various constraints some of which we'll discuss later. However, we have learned that through accurate definition of learning objectives, based upon real-world requirements, instruction can be designed so that materials, procedures, and time can be sufficiently individualized to meet the needs of most students. You're putting it in good words, but it's still kind of vague to me. How about showing me what it is? Okay. Why don't we visit some Air Force bases and you can see for yourself how and where individualized instruction is being used. Within the Air Training Command, many types of courses are in progress, including aircraft maintenance training. When we revised this course, we used the ISD process. First, we identified the job tasks, which required formal training. Then we translated these tasks into instructional objectives. Next, we developed teaching learning activities with the needs of the individual students in mind. For example, we developed a fast track for the more capable students. In addition, we developed taped slide lessons to individualize subjects such as hydraulics, electrical principles, and landing gear systems. During the entire process, we kept two key questions in mind. What will the graduate be required to do on the job, and how can we best accommodate individual student learning differences? In this carol, the student is learning some basic information about aircraft maintenance. When you watch him studying like this, individualized instruction looks easy. But there's more to it than meets the eye. In designing this type of instruction, several considerations must be made. Student factors, such as prior experience, prior knowledge of the subject matter, and reading level should be considered. Take reading level, for instance. Properly designed texts can help the student who has a high reading level and would rather read. Audio tapes are helpful to those who tend to learn best by listening. Other students may profit more by a 
taped slide presentation where instruction may be seen and heard. Other student factors to consider include aptitude, motivation, and rate of learning. Once course planners decide which of these their course can accommodate, they can determine how to individualize the instruction. In other words, decide what management approaches will be used to present the instruction. These approaches include self-pacing, modular scheduling, and multiple tracking. In the biomedical equipment repair course, the instruction is self-paced. Our goal is for each student to progress at the rate which is best for him. This method of training provides a high degree of student motivation and is very effective. It also provides a high degree of individual assistance required by the student to successfully complete each training objective. In self-paced courses, entering students are often pre-tested to determine if their prior knowledge or experience will allow them to skip certain segments of instruction. Once instruction begins, each student's work is carefully monitored and evaluated to ensure that he is satisfactorily completing the objectives and moving along at an appropriate pace. Sometimes students need to be slowed down or speeded up so that they progress at a rate best suited to their learning abilities. Now, wait a minute. You say soft pacing, but the student doesn't set his own pace at all. You did. Not quite. Both the student and the instructor set the pace. There are learning and motivational differences in all students. Some are fast learners, others learn more slowly, but may be just as effective. Some students are self-motivated, others need external motivation. Through interviews and tests, we can often discover these differences and make appropriate adjustments by using modular scheduling, multiple tracking, self-pacing, and individual assistance. Modular scheduling, or construction, is the division of a course into small segments of instruction called modules. Each module supports one or more learning objectives and may be self or group paced. Students are scheduled to receive only the modules they need. Pre-testing and counseling will determine what modules they are allowed to bypass. This electronics program consists of a large number of self-paced modules. Here we see a student constructing a parallel circuit. Here a student is operating an oscilloscope. At this trainer, the student is learning to operate the vacuum tube voltmeter. Since he had previous electronics experience, he was able to skip the parallel circuit module. Another management approach is multiple tracking. In this course, students are grouped homogeneously according to their projected learning rate as determined through pre-testing and counseling. They all complete the same learning activities, but each group progresses as rapidly as its abilities permit. Once management approaches have been selected, the delivery systems can be determined. By delivery systems, we mean the instructional media with which the student interacts. Perhaps the best type of delivery system is the real thing. A classic example of individualized instruction is the instructor pilot and the student pilot in the aircraft flying a mission. However, since aircraft operation is expensive and often impractical, simulation is used as a delivery system. Complex flight simulators allow pilots to rehearse and study many pilot tasks. They learn by repetition without tying up an aircraft. In undergraduate and one of the advanced navigator training courses, individual station simulators will provide direct observation of each student by an instructor and still allow the degree of isolation desired in this training situation. Each student has an independent capability and may proceed through a mission in his own environment and at his own pace, while the instructor is able to observe and assist the student, insert equipment malfunctions, and assess student performance. Part task trainers are used in courses at Altos Air Force Base, Oklahoma. In this case, the flight engineer is learning to perform checklist procedures. The use of trainers, such as this one, reduces the amount of time required and more expensive equipment, or in the aircraft. Computer Assisted Instruction, or CAI, is another sophisticated delivery system which provides a massive information storage and presentation medium. The student sits at a computer terminal 
and responds to questions put to him by an electronic display. The student also can perform simulation and problem-solving exercises. An advanced CAI system is Plato IV, seen here. Its potential will allow as many as 2,000 students to interact with 4,000 lessons. By touching the screen, this student selects an answer and receives an appropriate reply. Now let's move to some media commonly found in learning centers. As learning center manager, I have found videotape lessons to be a popular form of individualized instruction. These tape cassettes are convenient, long-lasting, and relatively inexpensive to produce. But the important thing is that students learn from them. Multimedia combinations can also be effective. For example, students might get the basics from a text, then reinforce their learning with details from a tape slide presentation in the Learning Center. A delivery system that has been with us a long time, but is still popular and cost-effective, is the Instructor Tutor. Instructors come in all shapes, sizes, and sexes, and depending on the skill of the individual, can often be the most effective delivery system of all. Other types of delivery systems are motion pictures, television lessons, and lectures. All can be effective means of individualizing instruction. No way. You've made some good points, but lectures and movies are not individualized instruction. <laughs> Well, I can appreciate your confusion, but it's easier to understand if you think of it this way. Group teaching can also be a part of individualized programs. Whenever two or more students are ready to study the same task in a similar way, such as through lecture or motion picture presentation or discussion, it is appropriate and cost-effective for them to receive instruction as a group. Well, I think I know what you mean by individualized instruction. It looks pretty good. But there must be a catch. If it's as good as you make it sound, why aren't all courses totally individualized? Well, there are times when the most efficient instruction is done by an instructor teaching large groups of students, since there are often constraints which limit the use of individualized instruction. For example, we must consider the amount of lead time available and whether or not the course content is constantly changing. If it is, Will the audio-visual materials, programmed instructional packages, and so forth require excessive revision? Also, will additional equipment and facilities be required? If so, what will it cost? Will additional personnel be needed to operate an individualized program? What is the student load? Does it justify added expense? Do all of your course objectives lend themselves to individualizing? For example, some course objectives, such as those involving leadership, management, or human relations, require group interaction. In short, will individualized instruction be cost-effective for a particular course? Can it be shown that operating costs will be less in the long run, or that instruction will be more effective and thus justify the added expense? In terms of cost-effectiveness, when you're planning an individualized program, and information is lacking, it may be advisable to start small. Study the course carefully before rushing into an all-individualized learning system. Listen to suggestions from your students. Their point of view can be vital in the success of your program. One means of getting student input is through survey tests, which are administered to students before they enter a particular course. The pre-test should include items from course examinations as well as items surveying related abilities required in the attainment of course objectives. The tests can be used to determine how much students already know about the course content and what combinations of group and individualized instruction may be used. For example, if it's found that some of the students are proficient in some of the course objectives, it's likely that modular scheduling or multiple tracking would be effective. Remember, that the cost and difficulty of preparing for, implementing, and managing an individualized instructional system may be substantial. For practical purposes, therefore, instruction should be individualized only when there is reasonable assurance that the gains from doing so will outweigh the cost and difficulty. 
In Air Force courses that have been individualized, the results have been very favorable. Our data from courses using multiple tracking, self-pacing, and modular scheduling show that graduates perform on the job just as well or better than previous graduates. Additionally, they usually complete their instruction in fewer academic hours. For example, courses in medical services, aircraft maintenance, transportation, and ISD were able to decrease their course length by an average of approximately 20%. Here are two examples of the benefits to be derived from individualized instruction. When I went through tech school, my instruction was self-paced, and I actually worked on equipment like this x-ray unit. I learned how to adjust and repair it at a pace that allowed me to make sure I got it right. As a result, I feel more confident in my job. The engine start, your crew chief has a far better view of the proceedings than you do. So if he should signal for an engine cutoff, do so immediately. If on the initial takeoff or subsequent touch and go, you elect to abort, your immediate action should be throttles idle. I'm studying in-flight emergency procedures. With this sound slide program, I'm able to go over the material till I know the procedures thoroughly. I feel much more confident being able to review these steps till I'm totally familiar with the procedure. Individualized instruction then results from careful planning and decision making. Valid constraints such as cost and course characteristics should be considered. But course designers, training managers, and instructors must continue to seek better ways to provide efficient, student-centered instruction. Both current and future needs must be considered when identifying and designing facilities, equipment, and instructional procedures. You should ask yourself, what management approaches could be used in your course? Modular scheduling, self-pacing, multiple tracking. Also, what delivery systems or media will be most effective? Will computer-assisted instruction and sophisticated simulator techniques be useful? Or can the course be made more cost-effective by using locally produced instructional materials? It boils down to a balance between individual learning needs and course constraints. What you mean is that you can make the environment for teaching and learning efficient and cost-effective while allowing for individual student differences, right? I couldn't have said it better myself. Shall we?